Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the ranch. I'm Dr. Lee, and it is another beautiful day in South Texas. It's a little chilly outside today, but then again, it is the day before Thanksgiving, so a little bit of briskness is expected, I guess. But anyway, I hope you're doing well. It's been a very busy couple of weeks here out on the ranch. We celebrated three years of this. Happy birthday! And we also celebrated eight years of this. Happy birthday, dear Daddy. And this charming young couple celebrated 38 years of marital bliss. My goodness, where did the time go? But anyway, like I said, it's been busy out here. We've started Mark's chemotherapy, so we've been going back and forth to Houston um, several times and uh, it's uh, it's going okay you know chemotherapy is rough 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 on the person and it's equally or more difficult for the people that love that person to have to watch him endure that too so been tough on everybody uh, the prayers have gotten us through the good wishes the good thoughts the positivity all the comments that you guys have left uh, are, just mean the world to us. You know, we look at you guys like family. Y'all aren't just viewers or subscribers. Y'all are our family too. And we appreciate you being there. I don't know how anybody could get through something like this without friends and family around. And we thank you for being our family and for coming to our side and leaving us all the encouragement that you have. So God bless you and thank you very much for that because I just don't know how we'd get through this without you guys. So thanks. Um, but anyway, Mark's doing good. Uh, Sunday morning, Mark and I were coming back from Houston and we'd been down there for a treatment and uh, we were coming back home. It's about a four hour trip. Mark wasn't feeling very well, so he was trying to get some sleep. And before he, before he conked out, he, uh, he commented that, uh, he said, Dad, isn't it amazing how friendly and kind all those people are? And at, at MB Anderson. And I said, it is in a giant, huge facility like that that sees thousands and thousands of people. They treat each individual like they're their next door neighbor and very, very heartwarming. And it really helps when you're going through something as scary as this to have people that really are warm and honest and sincere uh, with you down there. So it, it, it's a cool thing. But nevertheless, Mark, like I said, he was, he was feeling crappy. So he was trying to get some sleep. So I just didn't say anything to him. And on the way back, my mind was just drifting in the car. You know how it wanders when you're driving hours at a time and it's quiet in the car. And, and I was thinking about what he said. I was thinking about kindness. And I started thinking back over, over my lifetime and kind things that people had done for me and some things that I'd done for other people that, I was, that were very kind. And, and I was proud of that. And things I'd seen my kids do that were very, very kind, and I was proud of that. And I just thought I'd share a few of those things with you today. My dad always used to say, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. He wanted us to all be kind. And um, so anyway, nevertheless, I'll cut to the chase here. I know it took me a while to get here, so I'll try to make this quick from here on out. And you guys can get back to your Thanksgiving tomorrow. The first of these instances happened back in 1989. I was new to this town. I was a young veterinarian. I was working my butt off just trying to make this business go and uh, putting in long, long days. And I got home on a Friday night and I was just bushed. And the last thing I wanted to do is go back to work. But when I walked in the front door, the phone was ringing and I picked it up and my receptionist was still at work and she said, there's a man up here with a dog with a broken leg. And I'm like, oh gosh. And she's, and uh, I said, well, is, it, is he uh, one of our clients? And she said, no. And I said, well, I started to say, why don't you just send him down to the emergency clinic in San Antonio and I can go in here and eat dinner. But my dad had just passed away a few months before that. And that little saying of his, that kindness saying, popped into my head and I just said, what, is, what does this guy look like? And she said, well, he's a middle-aged guy. He's a little disheveled looking. He, his hands are dirty. He's got black grease under his fingernails. He smells like gasoline and his clothes are dirty too. And I said, what about the dog? And she said, he's in about the same shape as the guy is. So 
I just took a deep breath and I said, okay, I told my wife I'll be back sometime tonight and I went back to the clinic and I went in there and sure enough this guy was very close to the way my receptionist had described him and um, but he and I got to talking and we kind of hit off a, a relationship and, and uh, he was a nice man and he said well I, I appreciate you seeing me and he said I, we're just kind of new to this town and he said this dog isn't my dog this is my boss's dog and he said I'll pay for the bill and he said my boss will take care of you and I just thought, yeah, all right, buddy. I thought, you know, what kind of boss do you have? And uh, so anyway, I told the guy, a dog had a fractured leg and I splinted it or something, I don't remember. And I sent this man on his way and I said, I need to see your dog back next week to take this splint off and check the wound. And the guy goes, okay, I'll be back in a week. And uh, he said, be looking for something in the mail from my boss. And I said, okay, I I'll be looking. Yeah, right. But anyway, a few days later, and this comes in the mail, and on the back it says, photo, this is, this is handwritten on here in purple writing, photo, <clears throat> don't bend, fold, staple, stomp, mutilate, shred, and uh, and on the front side, it just said Dr. Lee and had my address on there. So I thought, what in the world is this? And then I pulled that out. Yo, Lee, thanks. Bark, bark, Jay Leno. So that's all that was in here. There was no letter, there was nothing else. And I thought, what in the world? And then I got to thinking, the guy that smelled like gasoline with the beat up clothes said his boss was gonna take care of me. So I don't know, so I couldn't wait. So, you know, the guy comes back in two or three days for me to take the splint off the dog. And I said, so uh, did that picture come from your boss perhaps? And he goes, did you get one from Jay Leno in Los Angeles? And I said, I sure did. And he goes, yep, that's my boss. And I said, what in the world do you do for Jay Leno? And he said, I'm one of the few people left in the United States that still knows how to take an Indian motorcycle completely apart and put it all back together. I know what goes wrong with them. I know everything about them. And Jay has a collection of Indian motorcycles. He said, I also work on his Harley Davidson motorcycles and I also work on his Duesenberg automobiles. And I just said, wow. What, what a deal, what a job, what a story, right? But uh, he was right, you know, the, the guy was kind to me. He was, like I said, it, it didn't take me very long to uh, get a, a, a good uh, relationship going with this guy. Like, like in a few minutes after we met, he was a very kind man. And his boss was very kind too. And the little bit of kindness I showed this guy by going back to work and take care of him paid off in spades. So. Got that going for me. The second one of these little random acts of kindness has happened a few years later when I was asked to serve on the school board and not knowing anything about it, I go, yeah, why not? And I got on the school board and found out it was a whole lot more than I had ever expected. Not all good. But one of the beautiful things about it is I got to meet a lot of people, all the educators in the school district and all of the, the staff and all. So it, it wound up, I made a lot of friends. I uh, got to tour all the campuses and um, I hung around the principals a lot for three years. And one of the principals in particular, our high school principal, was a guy that I just dearly loved. And it wasn't just me, the whole town loved this man. And I, I toured a lot of the campuses with him, not just his campus, but junior high campuses, elementary school campuses. And the shocking thing I found out is, is that walking the campuses with him, all the kids would come running up to him, hug his legs, his name was Sam Champion, and they would just say, Mr. Champion, Mr. Champion, how are you doing? And he would call them by name. And I just, one time I said, Sam, I said, how do you know all these kids? They don't even go to your school. And he goes, well, that's such and such his son, Jimmy. And that's, that's little Susie, she belongs. He knew. I don't know how, but he knew everybody in town. But anyway, this town just absolutely loved Mr. Champion. And unfortunately, Mr. Champion lost his life 
a few years later after that, and it just broke our hearts. He was the coolest man. He was a, a man of short stature, but giant heart. And uh, we all just loved him dearly. But on my last day at, at being in the, on the school board, um, just in typical Sam Champion fashion, I, I was, I'd gone up to the front and they'd say, Dr. Carricker is leaving us today. We appreciate all he's done, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, they said, but there's one more thing. And Mr. Champion went up there and he had made this plaque for me. He had this thing made right here. And it's just, it's a thank you kind of thing. He carved this apple. He carved this, this plaque that it's on. He put it all together, stained it, painted it. And then he got all the trustees to, to write just a little paragraph telling me by and you know, all, all that kind of stuff. They're saying their sweet things and stabbing me for being an Aggie and all that jazz. But up here in the corner, um, he put handmade, especially for Dr. Lee Carricker with love, Sam Champion. And that was cool. That was a, uh, that was a little bit of kindness that I pull that thing out every now and then I look at it and I just think of him and think of what a kind man he was to the world and, and, and what an example he was. Everybody in this town knew him. Everybody in this town loved him and he didn't do anything but act kindly. Big message there, big message. The last one, and I'm gonna have to put my cheaters on to read this, this one for you. And I hope you guys aren't getting too bored with this, but these are special things for me. So this one said, this is a recent one. Uh, Dr. Lee, you saw my wife, myself, and our Corgi Iris um, for a yearly checkup. While we only had the opportunity to talk for a few moments, my wife and I could clearly see how much you care for what you do. My wife's family is currently losing a pet to lymphoma, so it brought us both peace of mind to hear that our sweet pup Iris was healthy. The award inside this box, I'll show it to you. There you go. The award inside this box is my end of tour award that I received from my work here in Texas, and I would like for you to have it. Talking to you restored a sense of pride in serving that we sometimes lose that we sometimes lose sight of in day-to-day -day operations. So on top of everything else, thank you. After I finished my tour of duty with the submarines in Georgia, we hope to make it back out to Texas. It has been great to live here and meet you and Matt and see the great work y'all do. Until then, God bless you and your family very much. And he signed it down at the bottom. Zach, thank you very much. And there's that. How, how can you do how can you take that you know I I, uh, I will get this back to him some sometime I'm, I uh, was just a bit overwhelmed with it and I wanted to make a video out of it and show you the type of people we have in our military today some of the most wonderful wonderful young men and women so kindness what did I do I I just went to work that day. I didn't do anything kind. I told him I appreciated his sacrifices in the military. And, uh, but, you know, I didn't do anything special. And what did he do for me? He gave me his award, you know, his service award for, for being here. So, ah, that kindness will kind of break your heart every now and then. Sorry guys, I had to change angle of the camera. The sunlight was just about to get us there. This being Thanksgiving Eve, I would like to tell you a little Thanksgiving story. And I know you guys kind of like story time with Dr. Lee, so here we go with one more. Years ago in one of our inner city school systems up north, there was a young third grade teacher and, and on a, they were getting ready to go home for the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, she told all her students, she said, I would like for you all to take out a clean sheet of paper and draw me a picture of what you're most thankful for on this Thanksgiving holiday. She said, when you're done with it, set it on my desk 
and head out to recess. We'll go out there to play and we'll look at them all when we come back in from recess. Well, they did that. They went outside, they came back in. The teacher was going through them and she's holding them up. And there was a picture of a pilgrim and a turkey and an Indian. And uh, there were pictures of moms and dads and there were pictures of, you know, all the things that kids are gonna draw pictures of, things they're, that they like mostly. And she was going through all those and she held up one of them and it just had a hand on it. And she looked at it and she held that picture of the hand up and you know, the kids probably all started laughing, you know how kids are. And, and uh, she said, who did this? And there was a little boy at the back of the class and he slowly raised his hand up and she went back there to him and she said, Eddie, did you, did you draw this picture of a hand? And uh, he said, I did. And she said, why are you so thankful for a hand? And he said, that's your hand. And she said, it's my hand? And he said, yeah. And she said, why would you draw a picture of my hand? And he said, because every time I'm scared, you hold my hand. Well, folks, that's about it from out on the ranch with Dr. Lee. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving tomorrow. I hope you get to celebrate it with a lot of friends and family. Please be safe. If you're on the highways, watch out for the other guy because I look forward to seeing you back here next time. You guys take care. Always remember I love you, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye now. So what you doing there, huh? Neutering dog, Dad. All right. Who's gonna learn you? That's a mistake.